Don't you sometimes wish that you could have a crystal ball to look into the future and at least mentally prepare for it? I mean, look at the times that we live in. And so listening to this blink, that's a little bit like having that crystal ball, except it's better because it actually gives you the tools to prepare for uncertainty. So what if you were a futurist and imagining a future was your actual job? In fact, that's Jane McGonigal's job, the author of Imaginable. And so in this blink of Imaginable, you and I will be exploring some of Jane's ideas. There's a bunch of really great practical exercises that are going to help you prepare for the future. You'll learn to upgrade your mindset and replace negative defeatist thinking with creativity, resilience and optimism. And since we're on the topic of optimism, I should probably mention who I am. Hi, I'm Jasmine from Blinkist, and I guess I'm kind of an optimist. So who better than me to look into the future with you in this Blink and learn how to prepare for it? There's a bunch of immediately applicable exercises here, so make sure you're ready. Maybe have a pen and paper ready. And let's go. All right, just bear with me for a second. Okay, maybe a little bit more. So we're going to do a little time traveling exercise. You can also grab a pen and paper and write things down. That could be kind of helpful. I'll wait till you have those. Ready? Okay. Imagine yourself waking up tomorrow morning. Picture it in as much detail as you possibly can. What room are you in? What woke you up? Was it an alarm, a nudge? Is it light out? And how do you feel? And now that you're awake, what's the first thing that you're going to do? Okay, cool. You just did your first mental time trip. It was kind of easy, right? Now, let's try the same thing again. But this time, imagine waking up one year from today. So take a few seconds to vividly picture this future moment and let's go. Are you waking up somewhere different? Is there a different person lying in bed next to you? If so, lucky you. Do you yourself look or feel different? Is your morning routine after waking up any different? Okay done? How did that feel? Notice how easy or hard it was to think of the details. All right, last one. Again, close your eyes. And this time, we're taking a huge leap into the future. Imagine waking up 10 years from today. This is a little bit harder. And I'll give you a few seconds to actually really trace out where you are, who you are, who might be there with you, what you hear, what you smell and feel, and what you're going to do next. Got it? Sometimes it also helps writing it down. Okay. So, how's all that? It was probably pretty effortless for you to picture waking up tomorrow morning, right? Expanding your imagination 10 years ahead, on the other hand, that might have been a little bit harder, like you were kind of grasping at thin air. Now, stretching your imagination the way you just did is a really good practice. Your brain has to invent a totally new reality instead of just remembering what it already knows. But see what you just did? You made the unimaginable imaginable. Now, you can use your memory of the future to plan and prepare for what's to come. You can revisit that memory as often as you want, and you can really focus on how it makes you feel. Does it spark joy? Or maybe it fills you with dread? These pre-feelings indicate whether you should change what you're doing today to make the possible future more or less likely. And it's this kind of imagination, the mental ability to spring forward in time and pre-experience the future, that's what scientists call episodic future thinking, or EFT. And the name isn't quite accurate, though. You're not just thinking about the future, you're simulating it. Consider the difference between knowing it'll be sunny tomorrow and actually imagining yourself in the sun. 
trying to pre-feel its warmth on your skin, the bright light blinding you, the smell of dry grass? EFT includes asking yourself four specific questions. Number one, where exactly am I in my future? Number two, what's true in this version of reality that isn't true today? What do I really want in this future moment and how will I get it? And four, how do I feel now that I'm here? This tool helps you answer a simple but really powerful question. The question is, is this a world I want to wake up in? And if the answer isn't a resounding yes, it helps you understand what you need to change in order to make it so, right? Ten years. It's kind of a magic number when it comes to EFT. First of all, it's the most common answer to the question, when does the future start? We've been somewhat conditioned to recognize the power of 10 years as a conduit for change. I mean, think about the 10-year chunks by which we categorize our lives, right? So, for example, you might say you're in your 40s or 30s or 50s, I don't know. And 10 years is also how we differentiate history. Um, for example, say the roaring 20s versus whatever the 90s were. We know a lot can change in 10 years. And simultaneously, though, we have the mental space to get ready for that change, which allows us to be more hopeful and relaxed about dramatic shifts. This psychological phenomenon is called time spaciousness. It's the empowering feeling that you have enough time to thoughtfully and methodically tackle the things that matter. And that way, you can create the future that you desire. So try this quick spaciousness exercise. Right now, pick an itty-bitty task, like finishing this blink, and give yourself 10 years to do it. Put it in the Google Calendar. Science shows that, in general, the less time you feel you have to get things done, the less you'll do. And vice versa. Your brain really needs to think that it has a lot of time in order for this to work, and so go ahead, splurge on your deadlines. Start giving yourself 10 years to finish that work report or to master the art of brewing kombucha. Whatever it is, you might surprise yourself with how much happier and faster you complete tasks when you feel time rich. That's kind of a nice word, right? Time rich. 10 years. It's also a really long way to travel all on your own. And so to guide you along your mental time trips, you can use what professional futurists call a future scenario. Basically, it's a detailed description of a future where you wake up and something is drastically different from your current reality. And so when you immerse yourself in future scenarios, embrace the details, the drama, the absurdity. In fact, futurists have a rule for that last one. There's something called Dater's Law, and it states... Any useful statement about the future should at first seem ridiculous. Being receptive to silly ideas will stretch your open-mindedness and creativity. And so to help unstick your imagination, here's a little game. First, make a list of five things, or a hundred if you're feeling super ambitious, that are true today. Here's a couple to get you started. Number one, shoes aren't free. Because they aren't, you know. And number two, most people own more than one pair of shoes. Now, assume that in 10 years, the opposite is true. So it would say, in 10 years, shoes are free. And in 10 years, most people own only one pair of shoes. So try to make sense of these topsy-turvy worlds. How did this change happen? How did this new reality work? you might come up with some surprisingly plausible answers. So in the future, for example, shoes might be free in exchange for your data. I mean, just think of Facebook, right? And people might own only one pair if there's a big decrease in consumption due to global climate action. Using your episodic future thinking skills, imagine how you'd personally respond to the opportunities and challenges of these possible futures. So in one word, tell me, how would you feel? You can also try flipping some facts about your own life. Again, write down five things that are true today. 
So on my own list, I'd write, I'm a European citizen. I travel a lot. I'm a journalist. I sleep at night and I do love puns because I do. Yes. Then rewrite them so that in 10 years, the opposite is true. And just embrace how absurd it could be. You know, so for me, that would be, I'm a Canadian citizen. You know, I love Canadians, so that would kind of be cool. So, uh, and the second would be, I don't travel. I manage a taco shop and I sleep during the day and I hate puns. I'm sorry, this is never going to happen, but it could be true. So choose an upside down fact and mentally time travel into the future to see how vividly you can envision the change. I mean, really imagine what might have led to this shift, how it feels, the things that you do that you can't do today, and why the alternatives popped into your mind in the first place. You're not trying to create a plan to drastically alter your life here. The point is to simply make your imagination a bit more bendy. It's 2010 and McGonagall, the author of Imaginable, has created a large-scale future simulation game called Evoke. It's set 10 years ahead, in 2020, can you imagine? And so for 10 weeks, nearly 20,000 players imagine what they'd do to help others during a conflation of future global crises. And that included a pandemic, a social media-driven misinformation campaign, sound familiar, and extreme weather events. They predict how they'd feel and the specific actions that they'd take. They're looking at how these things might change their daily habits. Would they wear masks, for example? What social interactions would they avoid? Would they stay home? Now, wait a minute. We're talking about a game, right? So how come so much of this sounds so familiar? The fact that Evoke's storyline mirrors what we saw in the headlines of the real 2020 is no coincidence. McGonagall was inspired by future forces that global experts had predicted for years. A future force is a phenomenon that's likely to disrupt society. It's sometimes described as a megatrend or a macro force or a driver of change. And it usually begins as a small clue or a signal of change. A signal of change is a real-life example of how the world is shifting. So take the pizzly bear, for instance. It's a new hybrid species between a polar bear and a grizzly bear. I've been a little bit obsessed with those bears. And so global warming's making the polar bears go south into grizzly bear territory. There, though, the grizzly bears usually outcompete them for food. And so to survive... Female polar bears have started mating with the male grizzly bears, and the result is a pizzly. And so this signifies that, yes, climate change is threatening biodiversity, but it's also a show of resilience when encountering sudden environmental change, which, by the way, could soon apply to us humans. In the coming years, we might need to go through a similar migration, moving away from extreme climates and squishing together into smaller spaces. Finding signals of change can be as simple as typing future of anything into Google. I mean, don't type anything, you know, future of something in brackets into Google. Try future of mental health, future of prison reform, or something sillier like future of cake. It's up to you. You can also discover the future forces hiding in plain sight by checking out the World Economic Forum's annual global risks report. I know it's a mouthful, but trust me, it's kind of interesting. I'm not going to lie, it's not light reading. And so in 2021, the report identified global warming, infectious diseases, weapons of mass destruction, cyber attacks, and social unrest as the forces that would have the biggest global impact in the next decade. And when you consider future risks like these, you're using what's called your shadow imagination. You're exploring what could possibly go wrong. So now it's on you. Make your own personal list of the various future forces that you think will affect you and your loved ones over the next 10 years. But let's focus on the positives this time. So look at your list and pick one force that makes you feel especially hopeful. 
Take a brief mental time trip to a future in which this development is at its peak and spend a few seconds with your pre-feelings. Can you vividly imagine the excitement, relief and gratitude you're going to experience? In this case, when you're thinking about happy scenarios, you're employing your positive imagination. You're exploring something good that could happen. Developing both your shadow and positive imagination and then seeking actionable ways to shape the future yields a fundamental takeaway of imagination training called urgent optimism. When you have urgent optimism, you feel balanced. You know that there are challenges ahead, but you're realistically hopeful that you can solve them. Urgent optimism means that you're not losing sleep over worries about the future. Instead, you're stoked to get out of bed in the morning and do something about it. Here's a thing from this title that kind of blew my mind. Your future self is a stranger. And I'm not trying to be poetic here. It's just a neurological truth. MRI studies show that when you imagine future you, your brain acts as though you're considering a completely different person. Your imagination literally switches from a first-person perspective where you see the world from within your own body to a third-person perspective where you experience your actions from an out-of-body vantage point. And that's just another reason why mental time trips 10 years into the future are so effective at stretching the imagination. They unstick you by allowing you to float above your normal mode of feeling and thinking. But this weird neurological behavior also makes it more difficult to perform actions that benefit your future self. Think about it. When your brain sees future you as a stranger, it tends to exhibit less self-control and make fewer decisions for the greater good. You procrastinate more, you give up sooner when you're frustrated, and you're worse at resisting temptations, and you save less money for retirement. Because after all, why would you give away your hard-earned cash to a total stranger, right? And so to counter this effect, it's important to cultivate more empathy for your future self, to start treating future you like, if not you, then maybe a good friend. So how do you do this? Well, there are two types of empathy. The first one is kind of easy. It's when you can immediately relate to what somebody is feeling because you've experienced it yourself. So say you were bullied as a kid, and if you see another child being bullied, you'll probably empathize with them quickly and viscerally, re-experiencing your own anger and fear. And the second kind of empathy is called hard empathy, an effort, like when you fundamentally disagree with somebody and yet you still try to understand where they're coming from. And a good way to cultivate hard empathy is to consult a news source and find a story about somebody whose life is radically different from yours. Picture in detail your own life circumstances changing to be more like theirs. Do you play video games? Because if so, you may be boosting your well-being. Studies show that gamers generally set higher goals for themselves in everyday life than non-gamers. They're way more resilient in the face of real-world setbacks, and they're more likely to ask for assistance from and offer help to family and friends. So why do they have such a strong sense of agency? Well, every game begins with a challenge or a threat, so to say, right? Like one of those Pac-Man ghosts. Often, players are given very little information and have to figure out what they're even supposed to do. And they have to discover which allies to recruit, which resources to collect, and what strategies will allow them to succeed. Ultimately, as players untangle the game and accomplish their goals, their confidence... In other words, video games like Future Scenarios offer therapeutic practice, which is the chance to practice learned helpfulness. Learned helpfulness is the opposite of learned helplessness, the feeling that nothing you do matters. Learned helpfulness is having a sense of confidence and control when it comes to tackling problems. Every time you feel an unmet need to help somebody who's suffering, you strengthen the neurological pathways that make you feel like you can sway an outcome. And finding your own unique way to help or 
answering the future's call to adventure, so to say, is, according to McGonagall, the most vital future imagination skill of all. And so every time you approach a future scenario, ask yourself three questions. Number one, what will people need and want in the future? Number two, what kinds of people will especially be useful in the future? And number three, how will I use my unique strengths to help others in this future? These are really good questions, right? Okay, so maybe you've never thought of yourself as somebody who has an active imagination, but I bet you've never played a long form social simulation before either. And so to finish up, let's try one last game. It's one that'll immerse you in a world where something you take for granted today changes virtually overnight. And that something is garbage. Trust me on this. Okay, close your eyes and we're traveling in time forward. It's June 1st, 2032, and you no longer have a garbage can. There's no more recycling bin either. Those services are obsolete starting immediately, but luckily composting is still being collected every week. And yeah, you thought the plan kind of sounded cuckoo when the federal government announced it last year. But now we're here. And to be fair, it's not a total shock, because recycling never really worked, the landfills were overflowing and the waste to energy plants were all shut down when it became obvious that burning trash was making people sick. So, bye-bye trash cans and hello 1000% sales tax on any item with non-compostable packaging. You want an Americano in a plastic cup? That'll be $22, please. And on the other hand, you're looking forward to a potential cash bonus to the tune of $10,000 if the country can reduce its annual collective waste by 80% within a year. And the government used to spend trillions of dollars every year to bury and burn trash. And now that money goes towards healthcare, education and universal basic income. People aren't mindlessly accumulating stuff anymore. And instead, they're spending money on experiences. Zero waste is the new normal. It's a vibe and you're feeling it. And you're not the only one either. People are feeling so good about the situation that psychologists have come up with a new word. It's called xeroforia. It's a brave new world and one that you're going to sustain over the next 10 days. I know it sounds a lot, but we want to give the scenario enough time to simmer and really develop its flavors like a good stew. So as you go through your daily activities and your current real life over the next week and a half, keep the scenario playing in the back of your mind. Everything you do, each interaction you have or place you go, how would they be different in that future scenario? You can record your immediate reactions in your future journal. That can be a physical notebook or emails or a video diary, whatever you want. And here are some prompts for you to get started. Describe what you're feeling in one word. What habit could you change that would decrease your trash right now? What would be the hardest thing to change or give up? And will you embrace this new post-trash society or will you resist it and why? Every day, set a timer for five minutes and take notes in your future journal. You can free write about all the strange and surprising things that you imagine without editing yourself and share that experience with at least one other person. It'll make the simulation feel a little bit more real, like you've got a collective dream. And by the way, this scenario that I'm suggesting here is based on real future forces and signals of change. Just search the global waste crisis or the zero waste movement. And when you reach the actual 2032, who knows? You might have an eerie sense of deja vu, but your experience of having seen and felt it coming will have prepared you to handle the real deal with confidence and optimism. All right, here's what we've learned. When you think about a reality 10 years in the future, you're not necessarily preparing for a catastrophe, but instead you get to bend your mind a bit. 
you can build up your mental resilience. And if you start remembering the future in a way and imagining it, you can stay calm and practice urgent optimism when the time comes. And so basically, you just got a bunch of tools that you can use to come up with some future scenarios. And so here's what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to try and use them because I kind of like a future without garbage and where shoes are for free. <laughs>